I recently made a video about Teespring and Redbubble and which one I thought was better. And in that video, it made it feel seem like I preferred Teespring and quite rightly so, because I do actually prefer Teespring, but I got a lot of comments of people saying, well, you missed out the most important part of the comparison, and that is which company will market your shirts better and which company will get you more organic sales. And you are quite right. I apologize for missing that out. I didn't mean to miss it out. And that is why I've made this follow-up video where I will talk just about which company markets your shirts better and which one will make you more money. So before I get started, let me just quickly define organic sale because you have organic sales and you have paid sales. Organic sale is basically when you don't have to do anything. You upload your shirt and the company will do all the marketing, everything, and they will get you the sale at the end of the day and it hasn't cost you anything, right? And then you have paid sales. Paid sales is like when you have Facebook advertising going or Instagram advertising going, or maybe you pay for Instagram shout outs. But basically a paid sale is when you've had to pay out of your own pocket for your customer to land on your page and buy your product. Obviously the one we prefer is organic sales because we have a much higher profit margin with organic sales. Organic sales are absolutely vital if you're a beginner selling on Teespring or Redbubble or any company for that matter, because you might not have the biggest budget and that is totally and utterly understandable. You are trying to get this business started with as little money as possible. So organic sales will play a huge part in whether or not you succeed. So that's why I felt this video was very important. And as the comments quite rightly said, I shouldn't have missed it out. And hopefully this will answer anyone's questions about which platform is better to actually get you more organic sales. Well, I don't just want to tell you which company can get you more sales organically. I also want to tell you how you can, you know, heighten your chances to actually get more organic sales. And that's what we're going to do. But before we get started, before I tell you how you can get more sales and before I tell you which company is going to get you more sales, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I I think I'm at like 13,000 now and it has slowed down quite a bit and I really, really want to get to 100,000 subscribers. I know it seems really far away, but if you haven't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. If you hit that subscribe button, you hit the bell notification because if you're on this video, you're clearly liking my videos and these videos are only getting bigger, better and just better. So let's just jump straight into the video. No more fluff. Let's start with Redbubble and let me quickly first tell you on Redbubble how you can get more sales. So obviously the first thing you want to make sure you're doing is you're selling your design across all of their different types of products because as you know Redbubble have tons of different types of products and even though it takes quite a while to upload your design and actually edit the design for each individual product, if you want to increase your chances of getting sales, especially organic sales, you want to be uploading your product, your design on every single one of their products. Now, based off the research I've done in the last week or so, I have seen that t-shirts, socks, stickers, and pillows sell the best on Redbubble. So whatever you do, make sure you are at least uploading your designs onto those products. Now, a very important thing to remember with Redbubble, especially Redbubble, is it's a it's a playground for artists. It's not a playground for people just to randomly upload tons of rubbish designs. Okay, so if you have a look at Redbubble, you'll see their designs are really, really good. You want to make sure your designs fit with their platform wonderfully. And in order to do that, you have to make sure your designs are really, really good as well. Okay, you can't just upload simple text designs if they're rubbish. You want to upload really good, wacky designs. Maybe try and take a twist off of some pop culture references or whatever it may be, but you want to make sure your designs really, really stand out. And of course, this leads straight on to, you want to make sure you're uploading a lot of designs because the more designs you have on the platform, the more chances you have to actually make sales. Now, don't let uploading more designs go against what I said previously, which was, the quality. So don't go quality, don't go quantity over quality. You still want to have high quality designs, but just try and upload a lot of designs. And a, and a good number to shoot for is maybe try and upload three designs a day. It can take you about an hour to create a design. That's three hours a day. After a month, you'll have a lot of designs going, a lot of designs on their platform and providing you do all the next steps correctly as well. There is no reason why you shouldn't get a lot of organic sales. All right, now let's talk about tags. I've opened my computer here so that I can actually illustrate this for you. But tags are the single most important thing to whether or not you get organic sales. And that is, if you don't use tags, Redbubble will not know how to position you on their marketplace. You have got to use tags to 
correctly you know describe your product so that you show up with certain search terms and I'm going to actually show this for you right here so you can see you have tags here you separate them with commas and you can have 15 tags or I, I think you could actually have more but it says use 15 relevant tags okay and now you want to be careful which tags you actually use you don't want to start using tags that are incredibly incredibly difficult to compete with and the way you can find that out is if I go here right let's say I'm selling a mountain biking t-shirt if I search mountain biking I can see that there are 24,438 results. That is quite a lot of results. If I search in cool mountain biking, right, it will go down to 1,715 results. So you can see how you're immediately competing with a lot less people, okay? So that's the first tip when it comes to tags. The second tip when it comes to tags is you can actually click on someone's listing and see exactly what tags they have actually used to get a good idea for what you might wanna use if you're running out of ideas. So you can scroll all the way to the bottom and you can see all the different t-shirt tags they've used. They've clearly used a lot more than 15, right? And you can see all the different tags. So what you can do here is first you can click on these tags and actually see how many searches, or well not how many searches, how many products are in those tags, so 47,000 here. And not only can you use their tags like this, but you can also use their tags to actually get ideas of what tags you should use. Now, a great idea of what people sometimes do is they find the t-shirts that are selling best. They see which tags they are using and they copy those exact tags. Okay, so again, you add your tags over here in this tag area. And most importantly, you don't actually need to repeat your tags. So this is another point. You don't need to repeat your tags. So if I type in mountain biking, okay, I don't need to then do another tag that says cool mountain biking or, um, you know, downhill mountain biking. You don't need to do all these other tags, all these other words in the tags because you've already got the tags mountain biking. So you can use the word mountain biking and then you can use the word cool. Then you can use the word downhill. And all of these words, they can be clustered together when people search. So because they're in your tags, if someone searches cool mountain biking, Redbubble will see that you have actually used those individual words in your tags and it will show up, okay? Okay, so, so far I've told you about how you can actually increase your chances of getting more organic sales, especially with tags. But does any of this matter, right? Do you get sales with the Redbubble platform? And the simple answer is yes. The Redbubble platform is excellent. It's really, really excellent. It's a brilliant marketplace. And as well as that, Redbubble have incredible retargeting. And I know this because I've been doing so much research on it and I'm just getting blasted with ads left, right, and center. So. Redbubble will have incredible retargeting to the point that they will literally chase your customers around the internet until they actually buy your product. So as long as you do everything to increase your chances of actually showing up in their marketplace and showing up at a good result, because you'll always show up in their marketplace, it's just whether or not you'll be on page one or page 10,000. So you want to try and increase your chances of showing up nearer page one. And as long as you do all the things I previously mentioned, you should have no problems showing up higher in the ranks. And once you're showing up higher in the ranks, you should start seeing organic sales. And like I said, even better than that, when people start clicking your page and seeing your product, Redbubble will start retargeting them. And they also do email campaigns and all different types of advertising. And your t-shirts will show up in their advertising because of retargeting, especially because of retargeting. So in terms of if Redbubble is pretty good for organic sales, especially for new sellers, Yes, 100% Redbubble is really good. And again, I apologize for all those comments where I said I hated Redbubble. I don't hate Redbubble. I just haven't used it as much as Teespring. But like I said, I'm happy to be proven wrong when I know I'm wrong. And I have to say this time Redbubble really has shone through and Redbubble's organic sales and the marketing they do for you is really, really good, especially for a new seller. Well, now let's talk about Teespring's free marketing methods. What did Teespring do to actually get you sales? Well, Teespring have their own marketplace and it's called the Boosted Network. And you may be asking, how on earth do you get onto this Boosted Network? Well, I have to tell you, it's not as simple as Redbubble. As I said, with Redbubble, you create a design, it will show up in the marketplace, it always does, okay? With Teespring, it's very different. Teespring is based off a trust score that you build up over time. This trust score you cannot see. You just have to assume it's either good or bad. The way you get a, a trust score, a good trust score, a bad trust score, but the way you get a trust score is to get sales. 
which is kind of like a catch-22. It's kind of annoying because you can't get on the marketplace until you get a trust score, but you can't get on the trust, you can't get a good trust score until you get sales. But how are you gonna get sales if you're not on the marketplace? It's kind of like a brain, you know, spasm going on over here. So unfortunately, this is what you have to do. If you are on Teespring and you're selling on Teespring, you have to try and get the first couple of sales yourself. And you could either do that with Facebook advertising, with Instagram advertising, with long form promotions like just posting on Instagram over time, no, not paying for anything and hopefully getting sales and eventually getting sales and building up your trust score and then landing on their boosted network. Once you are actually on their boosted network, you can do really well. You can get a lot of sales. It's just getting onto their boosted network is not easy and especially for a beginner seller, it's really, really hard. So I'm gonna be real with you. Getting onto the boosted network in Teespring, as I just said, is really, really hard. Even if you get tons of sales and you're doing really well and everything's going like amazing, you still might not end up on the boosted network and it's really hard to tell if you're actually on it because when you search, you can't really find yourself. And like I said, there's no, there's no way of seeing if you're on the boosted network in the back end. So what I'm gonna quickly do as a side note, I'm just gonna tell you, if you do want to increase your chance of getting onto the boosted network, you actually have to go into Teespring's back end and click featured on boosted network. And let me just quickly show you how to do that. So you go to Teespring, and once you're in Teespring, you go over to drop down and you go over to settings. Once you're in settings, you scroll down and you click feature my listings in Teespring's boosted network. So you wanna make sure that is ticked. Okay, if that's ticked, you're good to go. So being honest with you, Teespring's, you know, form of free marketing for you is a bit rubbish. Getting onto their boost network is quite difficult and it's just really, really, it's just annoying because you can't plan for it. You don't know if it's gonna happen. And I know me, especially me, I like to be able to plan. I like to have business plans. I like to be able to have sales plans. I like to know what is going on, what's happening. And with Teespring, it's just so hard to plan because it is so up in the air. The only difference with Teespring is you can do Facebook ads and immediately get sales and just see how that's going. And if you can plan your Facebook ads and your Instagram ads, then yes, that's fine. But like I said, a lot of people don't have money to invest to do this. And a lot of people don't want to spend their money on Facebook ads or Instagram ads. They just want to try and do this organically at first. So we're gonna to get to the conclusion now. So in conclusion, let me just quickly say, Redbubble I think is far better at doing the free marketing for you than Teespring is. Their website really reminds me of Merch by Amazon, which we all know Merch by Amazon is brilliant. It's really hard to get accepted for. And just as a side note, I recently got accepted for Merch by Amazon. So if you want me to make a video on how you can easily get accepted or more easily get accepted by Merch by, merch by Amazon or on Merch by Amazon, or if you want me to make any Merch on Amazon, much by Amazon content. Let me know in the comments down below. But just getting back to what I was saying, Redbubble's marketplace, Redbubble's platform really reminds me of Amazon's merch by Amazon. And that is a good thing. That is a really, really good thing. And it just, it's fluid, it's nice, it's good for buyers. Yes, it's a more complicated platform, but at the end of the day, they spend a lot more time trying to get you organic sales. And that is what this video is all about. Now, if we're taking everything into account, like I said, I really prefer Teespring's ease of use, Teespring's website, Teespring's look, Teespring's feel, but you have to think to yourself, what is it, is it worth it to give up some of that, you know, nice fluid kind of website for the free marketing that you get on Redbubble? Let me know. And on top of that, Redbubble, I know I said is quite complicated, but a lot of you seem to think that Redbubble isn't that complicated. And that is amazing. So what I will say to you is what you can do is even though Redbubble seems more complicated at the beginning, just try and use it for a bit longer and you will in time get used to it really, really quickly. So there's no reason why Redbubble can't be as easy for you as Teespring is for me. And then obviously Redbubble has the huge benefit of the marketing, the free marketing. But as I said in my previous video, and I stand by this, okay, it doesn't matter if you sell on Redbubble and it doesn't matter if you sell on Teespring, you are leaving money on the table if you are not selling on both platforms. Okay, so I get the fact that Redbubble is better at organic sales, they're better at marketing your shirt, and I also get the fact that Teespring's website looks a bit more fluid, and that if you can get on the Teespring Trust Score, you're going to get a lot of, if you get on Teespring Boosted Network, sorry, you're gonna get a lot of sales. I understand both of those areas. However, what I'm saying is, 
I don't understand why people will choose one. Sell on both Redbubble and Teespring. And if you're going to let me know in the comments and say, well, what about these other websites like Teasley and Gearbubble and what is it, Zazzle Shirts, whatever they may be, upload your listings on all of these platforms. You're leaving money on the table. Don't put all your eggs into one website's basket, right? Put your eggs into tons of websites and hopefully you'll see that you get some sales, okay, from across these websites. I hope you liked this video. I really, really wanted to make it, uh, especially after I realized that so many people cared a lot about the organic sales. I didn't realize because I've always done advertising. I didn't realize how many people actually cared about free methods to actually sell your shirts. But now that I've realized that, I can make a lot more content based around it. But I hope you like this. If you did like it, leave me a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up because you know what? It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And as I said, my stats are going down and I need my stats to be going up. So definitely help me out there. And again, thank you so much for watching. Now, if you like this video, I really feel like you're going to like part one, which you can click up here. Part one of this video is all about talking, is talking all about the, you know, website of Teespring, the website of Redbubble and comparing all of those aspects, not comparing the organic sales aspects. So definitely go and check out that video.